Hello there, and welcome to Fixing the Sequel Trilogy, usually a writer's room podcast, but today a reaction and review podcast, because we just finished watching episode one and two of Ahsoka, so we're just going to talk about that for the next half an hour or so, and tell everyone our thoughts and feelings. We're going to start with episode one. Mello, let's go into it. Yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, yeah, so welcome. We're going to be doing this for the next seven Six, weeks. Seven weeks, yeah. Yeah, every Wednesday, so look forward to that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely yeah. look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, please. Um, yeah, wow, Ahsoka. So... So you have a lot more thoughts and feelings than I do. I haven't watched all of Rebels. I got halfway through season three years ago, then stopped and just gave up. Mm. I never really got back into it. It's yep. not really my kind of show. Not big on Clone Wars either. I did, however, very much enjoy these first two episodes. Yep. General thoughts and feelings, I think, is pretty positive yep. overall. Nice. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty happy overall as well. It, it is an interesting perspective having uh, seen and loved most of Rebels, especially season three and four um, when it gets a bit, bit more mature towards the back end and then, you know, going into this season knowing that Dave Filoni had basically described it as season five of, of Rebels. So I thought, okay, cool. Look, you know, you, you left us on a massive cliffhanger years ago. So it'll be yeah, really interesting to pick it back up. Before diving into, I think, plot specifics, yeah. it's very interesting for just newcomers to this specific part of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. What the fuck are you supposed to do with all that lack of context? No, exactly. And it's I think, very confusing. Yeah. And we'll, I'll get into, you know, how they're making up for that uh, yeah. a bit more in the first episodes. I think I just want to touch on a bit more of like the thoughts and feelings going in it's been a roller coaster. I was very negative because I did not enjoy Mandalorian season three. Like Book of Boba Fett, I enjoyed, but I know it's bad. Uh, Kenobi, again, enjoyed. I know it's bad. Mm. Uh, it's And it's one of those things where I was like, oh, I just can't get excited for Ahsoka, um, especially hearing like all these different things leading up to it. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. For me, personally, the last live action piece of Star Wars content I enjoyed, uh, apart from Andor, you know, because Andor, uh, was season two of Mando. So it's yeah. been two years of really rocky content. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, the, the marketing for this, obviously the show was announced a long time ago. Yeah, when they had that whole big slate, like MCU style slate up on the screen at yeah. D D23, oh, even before that, I was guess. It, yeah. Was it like, I want to say like 2019, like when they dropped the Rise of Skywalker trailer? No well? way, it's that long ago. Yeah, like, no oh, way. Man, That's yeah. a fucking while. Yeah. Also announced at that time, Lando. Yeah. Oh, wait, really? Like yeah. a movie? Yeah. No, no, like the Lando show. There's a show. Yeah. The one that Donald Glover and his brother are going to do when they, when they want to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that'd be cool. Yeah. I forgot about that, but that's, yeah. that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so look through all the marketing, everything I've seen and all of the other Star Wars content, it's been a lot of ups and downs. You know, when the first things came out, I was really excited. I really started to dip. I started to get worried after Mando season three. And then it's just the last few weeks yeah. in some of the marketing and seeing some of the, because I actually watch trailers. And I See, watch I trailers. saw them pop up and I'm like, what's this trash? Oh, it's Ahsoka. So I'd, I'd quickly flip past it because yeah. I, I just wanted to go in blind. I usually do that with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Things were looking a bit, they were a bit, looking a bit higher budget to me. It was looking like a bit less volume, a li bit more real sets. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. It, it is real sets. It is practical. Um, okay. Let's, let's start diving let's, into some stuff. Yeah, Episode cool. one. My general thoughts on this Master is... Master and Apprentice. Master and Apprentice. Good title. Man, I don't think Dave Filoni is a good director. I think he's pretty bad. He, I um, think he's a very, very talented writer and really understands story and plot in a very, very good way, especially when it relates to Star Wars. But God damn, those t those scenes, they took so long. I'm, I was mad watching it. Yeah, I was sitting there next to you and I'm, I'm there like just along for the ride. And I was like, you know, I'll take this thing as the... As the uh, as, as it's like... It's parts and it's total by the end of it. And just there watching Bryce's. I was vibrating. Very vocal experience. I was uh, trying to, to, to keep it in, but I'm like, oh my God, cut away for yeah, the fuck's yeah. sake. It's ridiculous. Yeah. No, I look, I think that uh, that first episode really showed he's, I guess, he's inexperienced as a live action director. I, I think, think he's so. a great animated director. I mean, it seems uh, that way. I've yeah. seen all the good episodes of Clone yeah. Wars because people have been trying to get me into that show for years yeah, now. Yeah. And I mean, man, like Avatar Last Airbender. He's directed episodes of that? He, he was one of the. He like well yeah yeah well, members well, of, of well, that goddamn team. he so, can direct animation yeah but live action is another world apparently it is different um yeah look I didn't mind like some of the slow burn stuff like slow burn stuff does get me as it does you know I think every audience yeah. member really not me um <laughs> yeah I'm a fast paced no no guy. when I say get me I mean like you know it gets to me yeah if, if, if it's a bit too slow oh gotcha the allure of Star Wars I think is enough to sometimes hold me um but yeah look yeah not not it reminded me perfect. of scenes in uh the batman the first time i watched it where you're watching and it's like it's the slow burn stuff but it's like god damn no one moves this slowly like batman doesn't need to move this slowly no one does this it felt like a lot of yeah directing fundamentals where it's like we'll stick with the character one really yeah let's thing. just we'll go to that thing we're, we're gonna hold thing. we're not gonna cut we're not yeah. gonna cut and then some ad is sitting off to the side like can you fucking cut like yeah. no we're not using this we all know we're not using this and then dave's like 
no, I'm going to use this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he made sure it got in. Yeah, yeah. And it sucked. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I really love the score in the first episode and the second episode. Talking about some of the specifics. Good, yeah. yeah. Score is very good. Yeah. I thought it was very strong. Some of the themes for, is it Balin or Malin? The, ba- Balin, yeah. I think it's that. Yeah. His theme was very cool. Mm-hmm. That came in. Oh, all the old themes from Rebels coming through. Those yeah, the really motifs. Yeah. The really beautiful motifs when hair is on screen. I thought those were very, very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Ahsoka's got her own theme in this. It was, yes. Yeah. 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 And, it's like, it's like, it's the one like, Oh, dude, season seven of Clone Wars' score, or well, specifically from the last four episodes, is fantastic. And yeah. Like, there's the specific character. And they brought, they brought stuff back from that. Yeah. Um, and there's what, one moment where they're on the hill, and, like, the little spy droid comes up, and it's the it's exact same notes as Darth Maul in Phantom Menace, and I was yeah. just gotten chills, like, oh, No, yeah, so I asked good. you at the end of the episode, I was like, are you, are you picking up on how yeah. much Phantom Menace is actually in that entire episode? Yeah, it was a fair bit. It was you really know? cool. Yeah, like, they open on, you know, there's some, some ship, there's a New Republic ship, and just, like, yeah, someone oh, comes in. Oh, it's an attack! An attack happens. They kill him, yeah. You know, like they go onto the ship, and they do so that's the first yeah. scene, the opening scene. Like the first thing we really start with in the show is this New Republic captain mm. on his mm. uh, the starship. First time center. we're seeing a, a big New Republic ship. Yes, well. and like their presence in the galaxy, and and what Dave is trying to get across with his idea of what the New Republic looks like. And mm. I think, as you know, the whole point of this show that we're doing now is fixing the sequel trilogy and. A lot of the things that are talked about in episode two, especially, yeah. are things that we've had similar conversations about, and we're like, "Yes, this is exactly what we've been looking for." Yeah, it's it's part of this, you know, like go back and and retcon in a, in a way that doesn't delete but fixes, you yeah. know, the content that was made. It's it's like you know, what what is being made at the moment, if it, if it, if it is good and if it is actually servicing the universe's story, is like what Clone Wars was to the prequels. Yeah, you know, it kind of helps improve that. Before we get sidetracked too yeah. much, though, yeah, so yeah. this first scene, they yep. come and land in, and we see uh, this ex Jedi now mercenary with his apprentice. They walk up and they start slicing through these guys. And the first thing that really hits me in the scene is, oh my God, this looks very good. Yeah, the action's good. They're actually showing, this person's been cut by a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. We're going to show that on their body. You yeah, know? no, yeah. you see some like physical damage. But I think beyond that as well, like the costumes, they really stuck to, let's go, traditional rebel costumes mm-hmm. with the yep. goofy ass helmets. Oh. It works. It looks really good. Um, the landing scene, like all the ships and everything, yep. the CG, the mix of practical and CG, very well yeah, done. Yeah, pr- practical uh, alien characters. And yeah, we've got yeah. the Mon Calamari dudes sitting yep. there as well. So all of this, I think, is just immediately, I'm like, okay, at least they've got the visuals right. The visuals look very, very good. Yep. Um, and yeah, I think they just, they, they brought it home pretty pretty good. It instantly kind of just brought me in. Yeah, cool. Uh, so from there, we are, also, we had an opening crawl. We did do that the was opening great. crawl. great. With like red text and scrolling down, similar to the opening crawl of the of the films yeah. but different enough for yeah. it to really feel like its own thing I, cool. it was like uh, but I think the more it kind of played out the more I felt it worked for me I yeah. really enjoyed it yeah it was good um, I'm just trying to think back now and, and people are going to kill me for this I think like the Siege of Mandalore arc, the last arc of Clone Wars also had a crawl I, I think you're right yeah. I'm not the Clone Wars guy so no, I don't know. <laughs> um, but no I thought it worked I thought it was good and it's, it is kind of like Dave Filoni's kind of personal touch and yeah. I think at this point he has had so much of an impact on Star Wars that it's, there is some of these things that he's referencing himself yeah in a, in a sense, in a way of like trying to make his his brand and his mark on yeah. it. And I think it's working. Yeah. So we go from there to this scene where... Uh, we see Ahsoka for the first time in the show. Ahsoka, which is cool. Uh, Ahsoka does her lightsaber spinny thing. She's at this old temple. She gets a map that's, you know, it's a map that leads to Thrawn. So this is where I started getting very frustrated with the show because this whole scene, it wasn't intriguing. There was no real suspense. There isn't the David Fincher rule of like, is it, I think it might be Hitchcock actually. Oh, Hitchcock a, with the gun under the table? Yeah, or, put a bomb under the yeah, table right, yeah. uh, and keep people in, suspended. I'm like, I don't care about what's happening. I've got no context of what's happening and it's taking a long fight fucking time so i was getting really frustrated and there's a couple moments especially in the first episode where we really linger too long on certain shots but that's fine the map i wasn't sold on immediately because i'm like what is this fucking mcguffin map in the middle of nowhere and it's a ball too and i turn to you and i start singing uh come and get your love by redbone from guardians of the galaxy (laughs) um yeah and yeah so they get a map that allegedly leads to thrawn and ezra yes and i'm like why but I gotta give mm-hmm. the show. I gotta give it more time to kind of sell me on it because it comes back to that in episode yeah. two, of course. Yeah. So Ahsoka gets away. Some droids chase it down. They uh, initiate self destruct, and then it's like you know this fucking small atomic bomb scale. So my bomb question goes is off. the first thing, the th- first thing I was thinking was uh, IG eighty eight or IG eleven. Which one's in Mando? Eleven. He's gonna self destruct. Yeah. Was it? Was it anywhere near that level of self destruction? No. Nah. Because that's nuts. Yeah. They took out a whole like yeah. city area with like some kind of napalm. T- bomb. I mean, in the timeline, this is after. So let's just say that they made a fuck ton of advancements. I guess. In the last few I years. guess so. It yeah. was pretty wild. I it, it seemed to me just to exist so solely so that Ahsoka would have to jump on the ship, which yeah. was cool. And then we meet. Uh, I actually don't know his don't name. Remember his name either. But David Tennant's uh, droid character, the lightsaber is droid, simply fantastic. Yeah. I think he's my favorite character so far. Maybe he's apart great. from Sabine. Sabine's yeah. really good in this. He's from a really like. An arc in, I think, season five of Clone Wars that people are like, yeah, because it has a lot of Padawan stuff. You guys have been trying to get me to watch this specific episode for a while, is yeah. the, the lightsaber building episode. It is really cool. So his role as this kind of, he's a really great foil to Ahsoka, where he is 
this embodiment of the old Jedi Order, and Literally. he wants to continue this tradition, even though he's a droid. He doesn't have like consciousness or anything. Or he's, I guess he's consciousness, but he's not uh, sentient. No, exactly. But he still has this coding, and it's driving him to tell Ahsoka, you must be a master and you must take an apprentice. Yeah. And he's so sassy about it that it just makes for really, really fun character yeah. moments. I'm, I'm really a fan of it. For a quick sec. Go do, for it. Do you reckon, so, like, his programming, do you reckon the file, like, you know, when you upload his programming, do you reckon it's literally just called the Jedi Code? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got this scene with Ahsoka and we're starting to get her character. I'm getting frustrated again because it's just it's just so long. Every time there's dialogue, it's yeah. just it's not I was I made the joke to Melo. I'm like, man, like I wish we had George Lucas still because we have no faster or intensity anymore. He's but, there's no one around to just yell at Faster or more energy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no one around to yell that anymore. But so we keep moving and then we st- oh, we meet Sabine. We're introduced to Sabine. Uh, in her yeah. introduction. Oh, you know, we get to see uh, Hera and Ahsoka. That's oh, we see, fun, yeah, their interaction Rebels, as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Sabine. We get to Sabine on Lothal in live action. Lothal in live action is pretty fucking cool. Oh, <laughs> it's great. So it's, it's crazy, Bryce, because over the course of Rebels, you see Lothal from the start, and then it turns into this when the more that the Imperials take it over. Yeah, I remember there was, I saw bits and pieces of that. Yeah, there's this hellscape nightmare place. And then by the end of it, you know, in like the, you know, the closing sort of montage shots of season four, it's like, oh, it's beautiful. And that's where we pick up. Yeah, no, very cool. And it reminds us of like Bespin and shots of Alderaan and stuff like that. It's like very futuristic, like the the utopian society that they kind of want to build with Star Wars. Like that's what we're trying to head towards and Lothal kind of is embodying that in a bit. It's really cool. We come to this anniversary of uh, the the date in which uh, Ezra sacrificed himself to free them from the Empire uh, and Sabine's meant to be there and she takes off. Yeah. Now, Russ, the scene that her taking off on this highway on her speeder is literally a scene from episode one of Rebels. Yeah, no, I, it seemed very familiar to yeah. me. And I was, I've always thought, why the fuck is this highway so long? It's so silly. It's funny because it leads just to a cell tower yeah. and then to the grass plains beyond. It's just one road that leads into nothing. I've always thought it's very weird, but mm. it, it's a cool visual. Yeah. Like, it's I enjoy like, the visual. It's cool. It's like the city planner's like, we need this. And they're like, okay, hey, we've run out of money. We've only got so far. <laughs> It's just, just going to be one road that goes to the entirety of the yeah. planet. Anyway. Yeah. anyway. So it's it, it's fun. You get this introduction with Sabine. It didn't... It was a bit silly. It was a bit like animated TV for me, but it was cool, and it showed off her punk rock kind of style, yeah. which is the same thing from the show. Yeah. Uh, but then also uh, uh, Legends fans uh, died. They just absolutely melted into their chairs because the E-Wing Starfighter has now been canonized in the show. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, for those of you who care about that, good for you. Hope you had fun. Oh, um, you had fun. Don't make... I had fun. Yeah, you was you. But I'm not as hardcore as they are. <laughs> they know who they are. God damn it. Yeah. Okay, so... And we're getting this... Like, we're building up a character. We spent a long time with her. She goes back to Ezra's, uh, like, little hut that he had lived in, the cell tower. Yeah. Uh, and he plays the recording of him just before he died. And we see just, the, like, the tiny version of him from live action. Yeah. Ah, we're going to run out of time. We can't go beat for beat for the show. No, but I know. We're getting a lot of introduction. And this is to the point where I was getting at earlier. I was like... This is a lot of context for people yep. who haven't seen any Rebels and yeah. are just casual Star Wars fans. And they're like, oh, what's this live action Star Wars show about? Oh, I know Ahsoka from Mando. Yeah. What the fuck is all of this? Yeah. Like, this is a lot So, right yeah, now. they're really trying to uh, catch people up. There is a bit of, like, in conversation a bit. It's a, it feels a little bit too expositional. There's very much times where uh, it's like, you know, Ahsoka will go to talk to uh, uh, Sabine or go to talk to yeah. Hera. And it's like, I know you're talking to me, the audience. Yeah, it's yeah. you've got to catch... You know, people up on se- four seasons worth of TV yeah. and character dynamics, yeah. and the r- they had a lot of experiences with yeah. each other. But then also, what they're catching up for everyone. This is for uh, old and new audiences alike. Is the fact that uh, Sabine was Ahsoka's apprentice. Yes, which happened all off camera, and yeah. I'm fairly certain. Oh, already one of our mates who's not a fan of that mm. decision. I think we haven't talked to him about it yet, but we're no. gonna. And I imagine that is going to be quite a controversial. The writing decision that they it, made. Uh, so far, the most controversial thing I think this show has done for yes. old fans of Rebels. Um, Pretty wild. So, yeah, we, do we delve into that for a sec or keep going? Just finish we'll keep going episode. because they, they yeah. touch on it more in episode two and I think we can, yeah, close our thoughts on that. But yeah, yeah cool. so... Uh, so they end with... So, so uh, Sabine steals the orb. Yes. The orb map thing, like, cracks the code on it. So, like, you know... <laughs> so, uh, so Which another, to, is another fucking yeah. scene. I was like, this is way too long and not compelling. Yes, anyway. sorry. So we have to say why that actually happened. Ahsoka went back, like Hera said, go to Sabine. Sabine is actually like kind of a genius in, in Rebels when it comes to that sort of I remember she was stuff. like a hacker. I didn't know she was like a full on like, you know, virtuoso. Yeah, yeah. Like her her sort of like um education when it comes to the arts and culture and history. Yeah. Uh is to the point where, you know, yeah, she can decide. She's kind of a genius. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All that old stuff. And then also, you know, like she built uh she built tech for the Empire that they helped to destroy Mandalore. Oh, you know, there's, there's a whole plot there. And she has to overcome yeah, I vaguely her remember that. mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, yeah. So they go to Sabine and they say, here's this map. You know, there's tension between her and Ahsoka. It takes way too long. Let's yeah. move away. Yeah. <laughs> she takes the little puzzle 
sphere yep. and deciphers it. And then, of course, they send this mysterious Jedi, ex-Jedi mercenary figure and his apprentice yep. is sent there to take her out, basically. Yep. And then we get that fight scene. Uh, very fun fight scene with these uh, droid, like these assassin droids. Mm-hmm. I'm really digging their design. They're very cool. Uh, very, very good practical stuff. It reminds yeah. me of the uh, the droids from Boston Dynamics. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. cool. <laughs> I think yeah. that's probably a design inspiration for them anyway. But yeah, and then, you know, uh, we've got Ahsoka trying to save Sabine. Sabine's fighting off this apprentice, and then she gets stabbed in the gut and dies. And that's the end of her, her character. Yes. Because that's yep. what took no, her that's Qui-Gon. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gets stabbed <laughs> in, in the torso, yeah. and no one's ever survived. And no one's ever survived it, except the Grand, Grand Inquisitor and Kenobi, and then now also Sabine Wren. And Reva. And Do you remember Obi-Wan? And also the Obi-Wan show did it twice. Of all the reasons, there's many reasons I hate that show. <laughs> And that's two of them. Look, so, I don't think yeah. it's the most silly thing. I just think they just keep doing it, and it's so weird. But but, anyway. Okay, so season, episode two, she survives. What it yes. implies, though, to us at this point, with how many times that they've done it, yeah. is that the technology just didn't exist. I made the joke. It was yeah. The, yeah, the Jedi Foundation for Lightsaber yeah. Wounds yeah. was started after Qui-Gon died, yeah. and that's and now it's just a <laughs> universal kind of medicine everyone has. Yeah. Do you reckon Bill Gates still runs that, even in this universe? Uh, yeah. It's a charity organization. <laughs> <You know? laughs> just, we've, got to, we've got such little time, we've got to try and crank through it. So that's episode one. I, again, my biggest criticism is just the pacing of each scene. The dialogue has no energy and no, like, drive. There's nothing compelling it. It's an hour long. It could have been 45 if you just yeah. cut the dialogue yeah. a bit shorter. Good yeah. Lord. I mean, theory with that, it's like every 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 slow scene gives your brain a chance to catch up on how much you, if you're a new new person coming into this fresh, just got dumped on you in the previous scene. I guess so. You know? but, I guess yeah. so. I don't know. I don't really see it. I just felt very bored a lot. Um, but maybe maybe that's true because I, yeah. I was pretty much across most of what everything was happening. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't mind it as much as you. Um, let's give it a score and move on. Sure thing. I like doing uh, out of five, so I'm going to give this one a solid three out of five. Cool. I like giving uh, out of tens, so I'll give it a 6.5. <laughs> See, that's the worst thing I've ever heard because that's out of 20. You monster. What? Yeah, I know. Technically, that's ah, the well, worst thing I've ever heard. Six point, well, actually, technically, it's out of 100. I give it a 65 out of 100. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Let's go bigger. No. Absolutely uh, not. So that was it was a good episode. Yeah. Those are my major criticisms, but I think visual direction is fantastic. It looks so good. The CGI and the practical really works. The music really works. I think all the technical stuff is really working yeah. for me. Um, the, the, the contacts are still weird and are never going to be not weird uh, Hera? with Hera and also with Ahsoka. I'm bra- I'm, I think it was brave and I'm glad they went for it. I think I'm glad they went for it as well. Yeah. They've, you know, but they've been trying to stick the landing on these practical, like animated characters being brought into live action. And yeah. I thought Hera really worked. How much time have we got? Can I make a joke? You make a joke. Um, yeah. Do you reckon that when they were performing these scenes, right? Uh, they had to speak really loudly because both of their ears are covered. <laughs> I mean, probably. Yeah. And it kind of worked uh, in episode two because they're on a cart mm. and they're in a loud factory and they're yeah. kind of like yelling at each other a bit. What? The Jedi? What you... <laughs> okay. um, it was good. Episode two. Episode two, I enjoyed significantly more. So yeah. we start basically, I think, with Sabine. Uh, and recovering. Maybe, yeah. Recovering. Or maybe before that, like the evil characters are like, oh, my evil scheme. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they fly onto that planet with but, the red yeah, trees and stuff. Trees, and we see yeah. the, the Stonehenge kind of looking thing, yeah. which comes up later. Yeah. I think it's very cool. It but, is cool. Yeah. And Sabine and Ahsoka, they're arguing. They hack into the droid and they get the the information about Corellia, where the droid was before. And yeah, like, so okay, there was let's... a droid that she fought and, and they were like, oh, uh, you know, do we have anything about the map? And he... Uh, yeah, memorized it. So yes. yeah, it leads us to Corellia. And that takes us to Corellia. And then we get to see the Phantom, which I'm not super familiar with. I know the ghost from Rebels, but not so the Phantom. The ghost is the big, big old big ship. Yes. And the ghost always had the Phantom, the little That's you know, right. ship no, that yeah. they could go, go around side missions with. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Chopper is sitting in that. We see Chopper for the first yeah, time, which is fantastic. Chop, nice to see him. First time since Rogue One. And so we get this plot arc with uh, uh, Hera and Ahsoka, and they're investigating this Corellian scrapyard. Yeah. And we get this really, really fantastic exposition it's a little bit on the nose. Oh, very much. And obviously, I think my, my my biggest issue was that Hera would already know this. She yeah. would already know this information. So yeah. it was getting exposited to her, but it was really to us, the audience. And I, but the actual information itself, very good. It's yeah. like, how many of these people working here are actually Imperials like, or ex-Imperials? No, no, no. Look, they're, they're loyal like, to the dollar. Yeah. yeah. They're loyal to the dollar. But it's yeah. like, yeah, all of them are ex-Imperials. Of yeah. course they are. All of them were. Every worker was mm. because the, the Empire had everything. So we can't just get new people because there isn't any new people. Yeah. There is no one who isn't ex-imperial who can work in these scrapyards yeah. and it's funny because it's like Hera at one point says it's like when was the last time you know like surely or like someone's talking about like surely this was you know people checking on this people people are monitoring this maybe i don't know you know like i thought it was fuck, really good. a little bit of incompetence there. and you can definitely see you know uh shades of what was discussed in mandalorian season three i that was my least favorite episode of season three was when they were on coruscant with the doctor oh, right yeah but still and they were that operation paper clipping yeah. these people into society yep similar thing here but just more in the industrial kind of 
you know, manual labor kind of area. Yeah, so you know, we get to see that on Gorilla, yeah, which we used to build Star Destroyers that they're repurposing yeah. it. And we, have, we both pop for it because we're like, oh, yeah, Solo. Because yeah. like yeah, in the background, there's like a, there's the frame of a Star Destroyer. Exactly, yeah, no, yeah. it was very cool. Um, but yeah, so, and we get that scene and they're very sus about it. What else is happening in the other, like the B story? Uh, so, uh, the villains. The villains are like plotting. <laughs> That's it. It'd be plotting. It'd be plotting. Uh, uh, no, and, and um, Sabine and the droid. They're so having he's their basically kind of arc, like yeah. goading her into, you know, so, so the basically for the audience, uh, as we find out more in episode two, yes. uh, Ahsoka quit on Sabine because they just didn't gel. They, they're they are very, very stubborn similar. people. Yeah. They're similar in a way that it's like two negatives yeah. and they butt up against each other and it just doesn't, it's not working. There's yeah. too much friction there. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting character dynamic to dive yeah. into. And I believe it just seeing them on screen. Yeah. There, there's a lot of really good character work, uh, especially done in episode two, when you're getting more of Sabine and her snarkiness and mm. how like how stubborn and confident she is, which yeah. is so much shades of Ahsoka in Clone Wars or everything I've seen and heard of Ahsoka yeah. from that show very much similarities there yeah. in, the, in their characters. And it's interesting seeing Ahsoka because she's supposed to be a Jedi Master. She's supposed to be wise, but she's mm. still so stubborn. Yeah. Well, she's supposed to be, you know, a, a, a Jedi Master-ish, like a, more like a, like a grey Jedi, because she still rejected it. You know, if, yeah. even the last time we saw her with, with Luke in, in Book of Boba Fett, um, you know, she's still not really... To all me, it seems involved, she's you know? she's a character who believes that she has learned everything she needs to know. She yeah. has all the wisdom that she believes that she needs to yeah. go about her life in the yeah, galaxy. Yeah, she's like you know, if Qui Gon had still wanted to be a Jedi outside of the Order, had he survived, you know, yeah. would have got, got, been like that. Uh, oh, quick thing, we skipped over a uh, Balin. We find out in Episode One that Balin was a Jedi in the time of, of Republic. That's yes, and that's where his uh, lightsaber comes from because yeah. the uh, our friendly David Tennant droid investigated his lightsaber hilt. God, I loved him. Yeah. And it is Sabine and he yeah. who are arguing and bickering back and forth. They have this really great exchange, looking out into the the skyline of the the, the Fall City. Yeah. Um, and he's definitely goading her, as yeah. you said, into uh trying to go back to training with Ahsoka. And it's a very great dynamic, and I'm, I, that's like probably my favorite part of the episode, and it's yeah. really working for me. That's good. Uh, and then back on Corellia, uh, yeah, so they go investigate what things are going on, and they're up in like this, you know, this sort of like Control supervisors, yeah, yeah, overlooking thing, and be like, that's a Super Star Destroyer hyperdrive unit. Cool. What do you need that for? No, nothing. Yeah, nothing's been commissioned to repurpose that for. And he's like, oh, that's <laughs> classified. That's classified. I'm a fucking general. Yeah. Yeah, but it's classified to a general. Yeah, but I'm a general. Uh, <laughs> very, very, very fun. And I didn't actually think it would go this direction, but they really paid off that earlier scene of like, aren't these all ex-imperials? Yeah, but they uh, they love the money. No, there's some straight up, like, there's mm. some people who still believe yeah. in the Empire. And so they kill them all. And so they murk them, as you should. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Imperial. Really great action scene, and then Ahsoka pulls out a double bladed lightsaber and sh fucking destroys Burst the, out the window. window. So fucking yeah. awesome! And she jumps down, and then we get the Inquisitor in this wicked knight armor. Oh, there the... was an Inquisitor, by the way. <laughs> We've never up until this point, That's but fine. there's an Inquisitor in the show. Yeah, this is kind of how the show did it anyway. Just threw him in there. Yeah, and so the ship is taking off, and Hera is chasing the ship, yep. and he's trying to get a tracker on it with Chopper, yep. and then we get the other yep. action piece with Ahsoka fighting. Dude, that is the whole bit with like them flying after the ship. And Chopper's searching through his oh toolbox, God, so just trying to find the fucking track. That is so Rebels. It's fantastic. Like, that's great. And there's a reason those characters were so popular and so beloved. It's yeah. just, it just really works. And they translated it really well to screen, and I'm yeah. very impressed yeah. uh, with that that sequence. And then the Ahsoka fight sequence. It's just really fun. It is. It's not like the most impressive choreography I've ever seen, but it is fun and engaging, and it kept yeah. me in the moment. Yeah. I didn't fall out of it. There's some scenes in Mando and Boba Fett where I'm like, oh, this action yeah. sucks. But from the last time that we saw... Uh, Rosario Dawson fight with all of her, you know, costume making and stuff as Ahsoka, I think it's much better. Yes, they've yeah. definitely improved. I think they've figured out some better ways to get around that. Yeah, and also I think handicap. Yeah, the Leku, her, her, her you know, head tails yeah. look better this time too. Yeah, I think they look great. I never really had a problem with it originally, but I think they're looking really good. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed this kind of, uh, it, f I really enjoyed that they released episode one and two together. I, yeah. Usually it's a smart decision and here it was also a very smart decision. Yeah. You get part one of the story and part two and because there is so much context, I think it really yeah. was important that they did that. And what it really rounds out here and I can, maybe this is part of the reason why they did it is it, it, it's 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 the character story with getting you know our master and our apprentice getting Ahsoka and Sabine back together. Yeah, that's where we leave off at the end of that episode, uh, episode two. Now we've got a couple minutes at the end of the show. Overall, I really enjoyed uh, episode two. I thought it was much better directed, a lot quicker with the pacing and like the dialogue and those those character moments. Just it's just episode one, but better in terms of uh, directing style. Yeah. Um, 
and all those technical elements are still coming home strong for me. I'm very much enjoying it. This one's a solid four, I think, for me. If we're going to rank so them. Four, four, five, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm closer to, yeah, like an eight. Out of and five. this, uh, oh, we end on as well, or somewhere in the episode, they have this big dome and they see this galactic map points off into another galaxy. Yes. Which, so, yeah, we go me, back to the red tree planet. Screams yeah. of, like, Thrawn's story in the extended universe, which is Heir to the Empire, you talk about. Yeah. And I know there's this thing called the Yuzang Vong. It's like a race of aliens from another yeah, galaxy. Yeah, but they, their whole thing is they come into the Star Wars galaxy from another galaxy yes. to attack. So and it's for, interesting how Dave is trying to tie those. It seems like he's trying to tie those concepts together in a way. So it's 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 really interesting. A little bit like it's very hard to try and you know they brought back Thorn already in Rebels, but to say that then we're going to bring back Thor, Thrawn in the time post Return of the Jedi, it's really hard to look at your audience, your loyal fans of thirty plus years of this character existing, and to say to them we're going to ignore everything because yeah. they're not going to ignore everything. It's it's tricky trying to adapt so much of this like extensive amounts of world building yeah. into live action and do it in a way that satisfies long-time fans and new fans as well. Yeah. I feel like the direction the show has taken at the start has given me a lot of promise for how it's going to tie together, especially yeah. the choice to make Sabine a Jedi Padawan and have Ahsoka yeah. train her. It is contentious, and it is weird for it to come out of nowhere, but I yeah. don't know how else you could have had Ahsoka have a story no, without glad, yeah. forcing her to change through tra training someone else. I'm glad we left off this till the end, because I, I don't want to talk about it too much. As, as, a, as a Rebels fan, to see this is like, Okay, I can see in the context of this show why they've done it. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of the easy answer. Fair enough. I you know, I don't I don't really like that they've now made her a Jedi, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna move forward. The show's gonna move forward. So Yeah. I'm uh, being less attached to Rebels, I'm definitely more in support of that decision yeah. because it's how would you challenge Ahsoka? How would you have her have her own story without yeah. having the contrast yeah. of another person's story? Yeah, to and, and what of. people are gonna then say is just like they can just go on a mission together, but it's like this. You know, like, as we said, this first two episodes is telling their character story and their, you know, their whole backstory to then being like, you know, let's yeah, get fuse them back yeah, together. Yeah, to really this, set it up for the rest of the show. And, you know, that's that's what's going to drive it. So It is going to be the driving force of the show, like their character story and their interactions and, and the the tension between yeah. the two of them. And if they just people. get along, I'm sorry, that's boring, you know. You know that's, <laughs> you, you, that's the whole thing in, yeah. in writing. You, you never let your characters... Nah, they've got to be uh, conflict somewhere. Enjoy life, you know, yeah. Um, But I'm... I thought uh, so much of what is this show is doing is really working for me. I'm yeah. really enjoying it so far. Um, I don't know any other final thoughts. You got anything else you want to chat? Uh, no, just that like from these first two episodes, I I'm really optimistic as yeah. for where this is going to go. I came in very hard in the, the yeah. before we started watching the show, I was like, I am not keen for this at all. I hadn't enjoyed any of the promotional stuff they'd put up. I thought, and then after having Mando season three come out, I was very down on Star Wars properties as a whole. Mm. Um, Outside of anything like Andor, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that the absolute fucking outlier. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that was where I was coming to the show from, and I'm very happy to say that I've been turned around on it. And I'm very excited for next week's episode on Wednesday, sure, where you will catch the two of us here yeah. talking more Ahsoka because we're going to be doing this every week. This has been our first episode, our first live recorded kind of thing we've done on this channel. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've been watching, if you've been listening, uh, but yeah, until next week, this has been fixing the sequel trilogy, and may the force be with you. <laughs>